Boise, Idaho is one of the fastest growing cities in the nation. And with such an increase in population, it's no wonder that we are starting to also see an increase in pollution. Idaho is also one of the most environmentally conscious states, however, with over 30 state parks and good recycling centers in place throughout the Treasure Valley. Despite this, single-use plastics are becoming more of a major issue. In areas like downtown Boise, it's becoming difficult to walk even 100 feet without running into trash. And as trash runs amok in the streets, it's likely that it'll reach nature areas such as the Greenbelt. A major advantage of the culture in our area is that people love keeping things local. You can see this with events such as the Farmer's Market, artwork in Freak Alley, or the amount of BSU fans at home games. When things are kept local, there is a lot less energy involved in the creation and transportation of items, especially consumables, because they require less packaging and handling from start to finish. For our innovation challenge, we were asked to find a way to influence and incentivize retailers to eliminate single-use plastic items in what they sell and use. Our group thinks that one of the best ways to do this is to push consumers to buy local. Some of the data we collected for this project supports this push as well. Out of 75 people, only two said they would not buy local if it was not made more easily available. So what is something local that is already easily available? To answer this, I think we should pause for a moment and have a glass of milk. I'd like to introduce you to Cloverleaf Creamery. Cloverleaf Creamery is a dairy located right here in Buell, Idaho. They have been bottling their milk in glass since the 70s. According to them, the recyclable glass bottles we use are not just for show. They give the milk a better taste by keeping it colder and fresher longer. But if cloverleaf milk tastes so good, why don't you see milk in glass everywhere? The answer is cost. When purchased at Albertsons, one of the several distributors cloverleaf uses in the area, the price of milk also factors in the container. One half gallon of whole chocolate milk comes to, to nearly $8. However, it was certainly worth it. We can confirm as we purchased three containers. Good tasting milk isn't the only reason to switch to glass, however. Cloverleaf Creamery seems to be onto something. We asked 75 people a series of questions, including if they would buy milk in glass if it was more available. The overwhelming majority said they would, however, the reasoning was quite unique. Most said they would make the switch for environmental reasons, but others said they'd just like the look of glass over plastic. This is an example of business that who found a way to not only improve the quality of the product, but help improve the problem that is plastic waste in Idaho. We as a community should be supportive of local businesses who don't need an incentive to improve their product and show that they care about the problems we are facing. One of the largest offenders for plastic pollution is drink containers that come from vending machines in bottles. 80% of all plastic bottles produced end up in landfills which has led to over 2 million tons of plastic waste in U.S. landfills and bottles alone. There are two ways that we can tackle this bo plastic bottle problem. More recycling or different containers. We believe that it is feasible to do both. Aluminum cans are what we think can tackle this issue. Aluminum cans are typically more efficient to store than plastic bottles, typically in cardboard boxes which are also recyclable instead of the plastic rings that you commonly see in the ocean. They're also more easily recycled with most areas even offering cash for your cans. As optimistic as we are, it's unlikely that bottles will go away entirely. One and two liter bottles are much larger problem solved because there's no substitute for containers of those sizes. The best thing to do about these is to make sure that they don't end up in land. So there's a few ways that we can actually incentivize recycling. This includes financial compensation and having cash value for single-use plastic bottles. This is done in many states like California, Vermont, Iowa, Hawaii, Oregon, and a few others. This gives value like say 10 cents in Oregon square for each bottle. And this can actually bring people in to recycle for financial compensation. It's not like drink containers are the only source of pollution. Another big thing is bags to carry your other bags and boxes and bottles to different locations. 
Plastic bags are another major offender in the plastic waste problem. They are usually only durable enough for one or two uses and are difficult to recycle. Bags are often the target of returning policies at many retailers, however, according to a study done by Waste Management, only 1% of plastic bags are returned for recycling. Most end up in landfills or as litter. They are going to be difficult to replace as they are a staple in bagging at many retailers. The main incentive to replace plastic bags, however, is cost. This is an issue that affects both customers and retailers, as the more money spent on temporary bagging is more money that the retailers have to pay and that the cons consumers must help to cover the cost at checkout. NBC reports that after a 10 cent bag tax for those who did not bring their own bags was introduced to stores in Los Angeles, bag consumption at an average retailer went from using 2.2 million bags per year to 125,000. By switching to reusable bags as a standard, many retailers can save significant sums of money and have that savings show up in prices for customers. To sum up, our solution to the innovation challenge is to get retailers to make the switch to reusable bags and bottles to help shave business costs on single-use items in the long run. There is already community support behind these motivations. All we need is a push in the right direction to get the ball rolling. Items included in our suggestion are aluminum cans in place of plastic bottles, glass jugs instead of plastic milk cartons, and paper or fabric bags instead of plastic. We would also like to encourage the community to keep things local. To wrap it up, to solve this plastic problem, we're going to need three things. Those three things are community involvement, making sure that these products are just as good, if not better, as well as holding these businesses to a standard. We hope to use these things to bring a change to our community. And we'd also like to thank you for watching our entry for the Boise Startup Week Innovation Challenge. Oh, that, that's, yeah, I